Okay, as we all know, when we take a look at the powers of i, we will just get i, negative 1, negative i, 1, and i, and so on, so on, so on, right? As you can see, it's just going to be a repeat of all this four right here. So now, have you ever wondered if it's possible to have i to some power and we end up with 2? What do you guys think? Yes, it's of course possible, right? However, though, in this case here, the power is not going to be just a whole number or an integer in general, because if it is an integer, then you actually just end up with one of these. So I'll show you guys how to solve this. In the meantime, I'll also show you guys how to solve some number for the base raised to the i's power will get 2, right? Just like throwing this in like a little bonus, which is pretty cool, right? i to the x versus i uh, x to the i. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's get started with this one. First, it's actually not so bad. It's just you take the log with base i on both sides. And then you can still cancel this out. Very nice. So we just get x by itself. And now on the right hand side, let's use the change of base formula. And of course, we are talking about the complex logarithm and we'll use the ln. So here it becomes ln2 divided by ln i. So I'll actually use the parentheses right here and right here. Now the question is, what exactly is the ln i? Well, to take care of this, we will have to look at the polar form of the i. So let me show you how to do that. Let's first look at the complex plane, which is just like this. And the i is right here, right? Because this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis. And now we need two things. The first thing is the distance from the origin to here, which is just going to be one unit, one. And the other thing is the angle, which is just going to be 90 degrees, but we are all adults now, so let's use pi over 2. So that's what we have. Well, you might be wondering, can we go the other way and say the angle is negative 3 pi over 2? Yes, you can. But if you say the angle is pi over 2, that's just like, like the first answer, and that's actually called the principal branch of the complex log. Um, I want to show you guys all the solutions. So the truth is, we have infinitely many answers for this equation. Alright, so what exactly was I talking about? Well, theta is not only going to be just pi over 2 because you can rotate it the other way, or you can just start with pi over 2 and then just keep rotating it and so on so on, right? So once you have the first answer, all we have to do is plus 2n pi, and the n is just going to be an integer. It can be positive or negative, depending on how you want to rotate. So that's pretty much the idea. So now, here is the deal. Here we have ln2 on the top. And on the bottom, we have ln. And the i is r e i theta form. Like that's the polar form for it. r is 1, so we just have e and then i theta, which is actually just this. So I'm actually going to put it down as pi over 2, but I will have to add it with 2 and pi, like this, if you want to have all the answers. All right, now what good does this do? Well, this and that cancel. Very nice, isn't it? Now we have ln2 over this, which is just i times pi over 2 plus 2n pi. Now, another issue. I don't like to be on the bottom. I like to be on the top. So, fix that. It's easy. Just multiply i on the bottom and on the top. So, this right here will give us the real number negative 1. Well, we have a little complex fraction. It's okay. I'm just going to multiply the top and bottom by 2. So, you will see this right here. It's going to be negative 1, put it on the top, so we have negative 2i and then ln2 over, let's see, 2 times 2n is going to be 4n, and then both of them have the pi, so I'm going to factor out the pi and put it at the end, and then 2 times this, we have the 1 right here left, so we have 4n plus 1 pi on the bottom. Yeah, that's it, and again, Maybe you want to denote that n is just an integer. So this right here will give you all the solutions for that equation, which is really cool, right? Okay. Now, if you take a look at the second one, x to the i's power is equal to 2. 
My question for you guys is that, do we need to use logarithm? No. Times 10, we just need to use the root. So let me actually write here as the i's root on both sides. Because this way, that and that will cancel. Yes, I know I could have just write here as the 1 over i power, but I think i's root, it looks so much cooler, right? So let me at least do it one time. Anyway, this right here will give us x, and this is going to be 2. Of course, the i's root is the same as 1 over i's power. But again, we have the same issue. I don't want it to be on the bottom, even though this is the exponent already, but I will still prefer to be on the top. So multiply the bottom and top by i. This right here is again negative 1. So all in all, we get 2, and then we have negative i's power on the top. Just like this. Alright, great. But the thing is that, what's 2 to the negative i? How do we handle that, right? Well, to take care of that, I will have to tell you, let's pay attention to the base 2. We don't actually like the base 2. We like to have base e, so we can use the Euler's formula. So, let me actually write this down for you guys first. This right here is the same as saying e, and then I'm going to write it as e to the ln 2 for the 2. And then I will raise this to the negative i's power, just like that. And then I can just multiply the powers. I get e, and then we have negative, and then we have the i. Let me just put it here, and then multiply by l and 2. Now, let me remind you guys what the Euler's formula is. Euler's formula, e to the i theta, this right here will actually be cosine theta plus i sine theta. Data. So the final punch is that, well, notice that we have this negative here and then the ln2 here, which is going to be the theta because the i match right here. Yeah? So we can just use this formula. And how many answers do we have? Just one in this case, right? Anyway, yeah, let's finish this. So this right here becomes cosine of negative ln2. Wow. Ln inside of the cosine of the yeah. And then plus i sine, and then again negative ln2. Well, one last touch. I don't like to have negative on the inside. Yeah, but cosine is an even function, so negative on the inside is the same as no negative at all. So this right here is equal to just cosine of ln2. But here, when we have the negative on the inside, or the sine, because sine is an even function, even though in the complex situation as well, you can put that in the front, and then we have a minus i sine of ln2. So, I forgot, I should have asked you guys, take a guess how many answers that each one has, but like, anyway though. This one has infinitely many answers, this one actually has only one answer. Um, I thought this one has more than one answer because we have the complex exponent, but I don't see a place that you can actually produce more answers. So if I did anything wrong right here, leave a comment down below and let me know, right? But I think this is pretty cool. Right? Hopefully you guys all like this. And as always, that's it.